Good morning and thank you for joining uh, me uh, today. These are uh, unprecedented times. The COVID-19 pandemic uh, continues to affect uh, the world. This is why I'm addressing you by virtual press conference today. And tomorrow I will chair a meeting of NATO foreign ministers by secure video conference. The first such meeting in NATO's 70 year history. Our response to COVID-19 will be at the top of our agenda. We will address the measures that NATO and allies are taking in the current crisis, while ensuring that we continue to deliver on our core mission, credible and effective deterrence and defense. This is a global health crisis. Our thoughts are with the loved ones, of the victims and with all those who suffer from the pandemic. We thank all those who are on the front line, the remarkable health workers and also our committed armed forces who are supporting the civilian uh, effort. NATO is uh, doing its part to help in this common fight against an invisible enemy. Our airlift capabilities have, uh, significant, have delivered significant amounts of crucial medical uh, equipment and uh, field hospital tents. Just this morning, a military cargo plane with masks, protective equipment and other medical supplies has uh, taken off from Turkey, heading to Italy and Spain. In response to requests made through NATO's Disaster Relief Coordination Center. Hospitals with spare capacity in Germany uh, have taken patients from Italy and France. Doctors have traveled from Albania and Poland to help their, their Italian colleagues. The United States has delivered medical equipment to Italy and the Czech Republic has donated 20,000 protective suits to Italy and Spain. Our newest ally, North Macedonia, is, is using a NATO crisis response system to coordinate across government. Across NATO, Allied Armed Forces are playing a key role in domestic response uh, as well. They are providing a vital support to civilian efforts, including with field hospitals, transport of uh, patients, uh, disinfection of public areas and securing border crossings. So when foreign ministers meet tomorrow, we will look at ways to coordinate our response even closer. We will consider how to use NATO military capabilities and structures even more effectively to step up and to speed up our support to national efforts against COVID-19. Because we are in this crisis together and when we respond together, our response is more effective. <clears throat> NATO's core task is to provide security and defense for almost 1 billion uh, people. So our primary objective is to ensure uh, that uh, this health crisis does not become a security crisis. Therefore, tomorrow ministers will also discuss NATO's role in the fight against international terrorism, including our training mission in Iraq. I expect we will decide to enhance our training mission further, taking on some of the training activities currently conducted by the Global Coalition, helping boost the skills of the Iraqi forces as they continue to prevent the return of ISIS and other terrorist groups. We will also discuss what more NATO could do across the wider region to support our partners. Afghanistan will be on the agenda. As part of the peace efforts, we are reducing our military presence. By the summer, we should have around 12,000 forces in the country. No decision for a further reduction has been taken, and all our steps will be conditions-based. NATO will maintain its commitment to long-term peace and stability in Afghanistan. The situation uh, remains difficult. So now is the time for the Taliban and all political actors to play their part. 
All parties need to engage constructively, honor their commitments and ensure inter-Afghan negotiations can start. And we will address how to further strengthen NATO's political dimension. I have appointed a group of 10 experts, five women and five men, to help me in this process. Finally, uh, we will welcome the Republic of North Macedonia as our 30th member uh, at this uh, ministerial. So even in difficult times, we continue to look forward and to stay united because our unity is our strength. And with that, I'm ready to take your questions. And we will now take uh, questions uh, on uh, Skype and by WhatsApp. We start in Brussels with uh, Agence France Presse, uh, Damon Wake. Damon, please go ahead. Oh, hello there. Good morning. Um, I'd like to ask um, how NATO plans to learn the lessons from this coronavirus epidemic. Are there any plans to set up some kind of... Um, group to study the response that's been done, what's gone well, what could be done better. And a uh, second separate question, um, also on reflection groups, when do you expect the, um, the reflection group you announced yesterday, when do you expect that to report, uh, report back? There was some mention of it being before the summit next year. Will there be any interim reports before then? Thanks. The reflection group um, is set up to support me uh, in the reflection process. I was asked by the leaders to, uh, uh, to organize uh, at the leaders' meeting in uh, London uh, last uh, December. Uh, and I will put forward my proposals to uh, the leaders uh, of the NATO allied countries when they meet again uh, in uh, 2021, also next year. So, uh, so the group is there uh, to support my efforts uh, um, uh, uh, to, to, to organize this uh, reflection process. And I think we have to remember that NATO has been through uh, or have conducted similar processes before. Um, last time it was headed by um, uh, Madeleine Albright, Foreign Minister Madeleine Albright. And, um, and I think this is a good opportunity, a perfect opportunity for NATO uh, to look into how we can further strengthen a strong alliance, uh, strengthen our political uh, dimension. Um, NATO is a strong alliance. So we are delivering every day uh, on deterrence defense. We have implemented the biggest reinforcement of our collective defense in a decade, and we are stepping up in the fight against the terrorism. At the same time, I have stated many times that we also see uh, that we are an alliance of 30 democracies from both sides of the Atlantic with different history, different uh, political parties uh, in, uh, in government. So, of course, there are differences uh, between allies. And therefore, I think it is a, a good thing to look into how we can strengthen NATO as a platform for uh, uh, transatlantic uh, discussion, transatlantic coordination. And, uh, and I think that is, uh, this... Uh, this um, Reflection process is a is a good way of doing that, and I, I'm, I'm looking forward to working with the uh, the uh, group, uh, uh, and I'm looking forward to also receiving uh, their uh, input, their advice, and then based on that, I will then uh, 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 provide my uh, suggestions or put forward my proposals for the leaders uh, next uh, year. Uh, we our focus now when it comes to the COVID-19 crisis is of course to help the uh, the civilian authorities, the health uh, uh, care systems, uh, to combat the, the virus, to, uh, to, to, to deal with the consequences of the COVID-19 uh, crisis. And we see across the alliance that military personnel are actually uh, helping a lot uh, with everything from uh, uh, controlling border crossings to uh, disinfecting public areas to uh, providing field uh, hospitals. And we see how NATO allies also provide support to each other. Uh, just today, a Turkish plane uh, uh, left uh, Turkey with uh, medical equipment uh, for uh, uh, two NATO allies, uh, Spain and Italy. And, and this was a request within the uh, NATO uh, 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 Disaster Relief Coordination uh, Center. Um, uh, we are also now looking into the lessons learned. Of course, it's too early to draw any conclusions. But uh, uh, anything related to uh, how we are able to respond, to coordinate our responses, and also the resilience of our 
health systems, our, our uh, civilian infrastructure, but also of uh, uh, NATO in times of crisis, are issues we have uh, to look into uh, after this uh, COVID-19 uh, crisis. Uh, NATO has developed um, uh, baseline requirements for uh, civilian uh, 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 resilience, for resilience of our societies, uh, and we need to look into them uh, to see if there is any need for updating, further developing them in the light of the COVID-19 crisis. Next question uh, goes to Terry Schultz uh, from Deutsche Welle NPR. Hi, thank you. Um, I wanted to find out what uh, you think of, of proposals being made that NATO could take a, a stronger role in sort of um, coordination uh, of the aid. Uh, the alliance um, may have a better idea of exactly what assets allies have in stockpiles that could be used. Um, and additionally, um, also is is uh, is more able to uh, work quickly um, with command and control. I'm sorry, the lag here is really bad. Um, and uh, hold on, I need to mute myself. Um, uh, and, and so um, there are suggestions being made that NATO could could actually take a central role in coordination and not leave it just to the European Union. And I also wanted to know um, about um, this lag in providing the supplies. Did d Do allies have some responsibility in allowing Russia and China to have used that space early um, to, to make these claims about NATO responsibility and effectiveness? Um, and the other disinformation that's being put out right now. Thanks. Since the beginning of this crisis, we have seen that uh, military capabilities have supported uh, the uh, civilian efforts to combat the COVID-19 uh, crisis. Um, and of course, uh, allies, nations know best what kind of help uh, they need and how to use their armed forces. What NATO is doing is to uh, help to coordinate some of those efforts, help to coordinate some of the uh, uh, support, and also with our NATO structures and NATO capabilities provide uh, some uh, support to allies. Uh, it's always, uh, uh, as I say, uh, possible to discuss uh, how we can even further step up and do things uh, even more quickly and, and, and do more. And that's exactly why we are going to have COVID-19 as uh, the uh, issue on the top of the agenda tomorrow when uh, NATO foreign ministers meet in a virtual meeting. Um, and I expect them uh, to look into what uh, can be done to provide more support and uh, uh, to speed up uh, the support we provide. Because this is going to take time. There will be a need for support over a long period of time. Um, military capabilities have been part of the response from the beginning, supporting the civilian uh, uh, efforts, but I expect also military capabilities to be part of the uh, efforts in the coming weeks and, uh, and months. Um, yeah. We already use NATO structures uh, to coordinate efforts. For instance, for instance, today we have this Turkish plane. It's a Turkish plane delivering uh, support to, to NATO allies, Spain and uh, Italy, uh, but it is uh, a military plane and it's, uh, uh, and it's uh, coordinated by the uh, NATO uh, disaster relief uh, coordination center. So, so it's a way NATO helping to mobilize uh, bilateral uh, support between NATO allies. And we will continue to do exactly that uh, and try to do even more and, 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 and also even, more, even faster when allies uh, put forward uh, requests. You didn't answer the part, sorry, sir, about um, Russia, R Russia, it being easy for Russia and China to exploit that space. And are you suspicious, for example, about these Russian medics who were sent there during the time that Europeans were not sending that kind of assistance? You've got I mean, at least 100 uh, possibly more personnel on the ground now in Italy, for example. Well, it is for nations to decide what kind of help they uh, need. Uh, and, uh, and, uh, and what we see is that this is an international crisis and we need to help each other. Uh, NATO allies help, uh, other uh, countries uh, help. Uh, and uh, and uh, at the end of the day, it has to be based on national uh, uh, requests uh, and the national uh, uh, needs. Uh, that's, in a way, what I can say about uh, the different kinds of help which different allies uh, are receiving. We now go to Lailuma Sadid from uh, Afghanistan Voice. 
thank you very much, uh, Secretary General. As you mentioned it in your speech, that the security situation in Afghanistan remained unchallenging. Uh, as you know, the month of March was uh, one of the deadliest for Afghan security forces. Uh, more than uh, four, uh, 40 Afghan security uh, uh, were killed in the Taliban attack in different provinces. Isn't this approach uh, uh, contrary uh, to peace and ending the war in Afghanistan? And second question, how do you assess the rule of Pakistan and other regional countries in the peace talk uh, process with the Taliban? Thank you very much. The Taliban must uh, reduce uh, violence and uh, respect uh, the agreement uh, they have made with uh, uh, the US, which is uh, the basis for an inter-Afghan uh, uh, peace uh, talks, peace negotiations. Um, uh, we strongly believe that uh, NATO has to be uh, continue to be committed to Afghanistan. Um, the situation in Afghanistan remains very difficult. Uh, we see violence. We also see uh, challenges uh, within the, the government. And therefore, uh, it is important to that all parties now are constructive and engage uh, in the peace uh, or uh, make the conditions, uh, uh, establish the conditions for launching inter Afghan negotiations. Um, we uh, are in the process of reducing our presence in Afghanistan, but we will stay committed to the Afghan, uh, uh, to Afghanistan, to the to the peace and security in the region. Uh, uh, and everything we do will be conditions based. And as I said, we will reduce to a level of around 12,000 troops. That's actually roughly the same level of troops we had before we increased the troop levels in 2017. And 12,000 troops is a uh, is a level of troops that enables us to continue with uh, the training, assisting, uh, assist as the train assist and advice mission we have in Afghanistan, uh, also with the different uh, bases uh, outside uh, Kabul. Um, a lasting peace in Afghanistan requires uh, the support of all the countries in the region, and that of course includes uh, uh, Pakistan. So, regional support is key to any uh, stable peace uh, in Afghanistan. Thank you. Uh, the next question goes to Irina Sommer from Interfax Ukraine. Irina, please go ahead. Good morning. Good morning. I can hear yeah. you. Good, you hear it. Good. Uh, Secretary General, uh, I have uh, several questions for you. Uh, considering such an ex extraordinary circumstances, what prevented the Alliance from holding meetings with, uh, in the same format, I mean, uh, via conference secure, uh, with partners country, Ukraine and Georgia. Uh, second question, you already mentioned a help assistance which provided to Italy and Portugal uh, via, uh, via EADRCC. I would like to know if NATO got similar requests from partners country. And third question is, uh, regarding your expert group you appointed yesterday. Can you please tell us a little bit more how did you actually select these people? Thank you. Well, I selected a group uh, based on nominations uh, uh, from the different uh, countries, uh, but uh, these uh, the members of the group uh, does not represent their country. They are there in their own capacity with their own uh, background and knowledge uh, skills. Uh, and the group is... Uh, is uh, is uh, is composed in a way which reflects that uh, we actually have a group that, that uh, have a variety of different uh, uh, backgrounds, uh, and I think uh, that makes the group a valuable um, uh, group for NATO and for the whole uh, reflection process, and will be helpful for me uh, in my work when I prepare my proposals for the leaders uh, uh, at the summit next uh, next uh, year. Um, we. Um, uh, we uh, we uh, we are um, we are as so we we have a, a virtual meeting tomorrow, and of course that means that we need to, we had to change a bit the format of that meeting. It was original plan over two days with several meetings, including with a meeting with with Ukraine and uh, and Georgia. Uh, but what leaders will do uh, is that they uh, sorry what I expect foreign ministers to do is to agree a package. 
um, uh, a new package of support for Georgia and uh, Ukraine to further strengthen our partnerships, including with exercises in the Black Sea region, which is of strategic importance uh, for uh, NATO. So I expect that uh, even though there is no meeting with Georgia and Ukraine, I actually expect that the foreign ministers will agree a package that will uh, further strengthen our uh, political support and practical support to uh, these two uh, countries. Thank you. Now we go to uh, Thomas Gutschka from uh, Frankfurter Allgemeine Zeitung. Yes, good morning, Secretary General. Thank you very much uh, for providing this opportunity again. I have two questions. The first one is on um, how does COVID-19 um, affect operations, um, uh, especially in Afghanistan and Lithuania? Um, and what is NATO doing um, to prevent the spread of the virus uh, with troops on the ground? And the second question, how much are you concerned that Russia is taking advantage uh, of this current health crisis? And which indications do you have for that besides disinformation? So maybe you can uh, refer to the military exercise that has been taking place. Thanks a lot. <clears throat> we are, of course, making sure that uh, uh, we are taking the necessary preventive measures uh, to prevent the spread of the virus. We do that at this NATO headquarters. That's the reason why we now conduct uh, virtual meetings in the way we do now and also virtual press conferences. Uh, and we have reduced significantly the number of uh, meetings and the number of people uh, coming to this headquarters. Uh, uh, that's also the case when, uh, uh, when we look at our di different military missions and operations. The different military commanders have uh, implemented uh, a wide range of uh, 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 precautionary measures uh, to help uh, reduce the spread of the virus. That's also the case in Afghanistan, uh, where, uh, uh, where Germany is present with its uh, troops in the risk support uh, mission. It's also the case uh, in our battle groups uh, in, uh, in the Baltic countries, again uh, in Lithuania, where Germany is uh, present. So the military commanders have made sure that they have implemented um, uh, you know, measures to uh, prevent the spread of the virus. At the same time, it is extremely important that uh, while we have uh, the COVID-19 crisis, that NATO can continue to operate, because the threats and the challenges we are faced with uh, don't uh, disappear because of the COVID-19 crisis. Uh, so we still have terrorist threats. We still have uh, Al-Qaeda and ISIS out there. They don't uh, disappear because of the COVID-19 crisis. Uh, we, um, we still have a unique opportunity for peace in Afghanistan. We need to be present and make sure that we do everything we can to um, to, to, to create peace in Afghanistan. And uh, we, of course, see significant military activities close to NATO borders with a new uh, exercise uh, in the western military districts of, of, of Russia, uh, close to NATO borders. We have seen significant uh, Russian presence in the North Sea. Uh, so therefore, NATO has to continue to patrol our skies with air policing. We need to be present in the... In the uh, on uh, uh, also on land, but also in the air and at sea, uh, and we have our standing uh, 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 naval forces, uh, which continues to patrol uh, the seas. So our operational readiness is maintained; is not undermined. We have made some adjustments to exercises. Uh, we have cancelled some exercises. We have adjusted some other exercises. But that doesn't change. That doesn't undermine our operational readiness. And we continue uh, to patrol the skies and uh, and uh, defect uh, and uh, and defend our borders. And we continue our missions and operations, not least in the fight against terrorism, because these threats continues to exist. The next question um, will come from Bucharest, Romania. Uh, Cala Europeană, uh, Robert Lupitu. Please go ahead, Robert. Uh, thank you. Good morning, uh, Mr. Secretary General. So, uh, giving your phone call with U.S. Secretary of State Pompeo, how will NATO act to counter this information and propaganda from both Russia and China on the virus? And secondly, 
regardless of the pandemic, Russia continues to pose a challenge on the eastern flank and the Black Sea. Uh, last year in Washington, you announced a package of measures for the Black Sea region. What will NATO do during the course of the current situation with the virus, uh, with the security in the region, which also, uh, which also remains very important? Thank you. Um, we, we, we have seen uh, examples of uh, disinformation uh, propaganda. And uh, uh, I don't believe that the best response to propaganda is propaganda. I believe that the best response to propaganda is the facts, is, uh, is the truth. Uh, and, therefore, um, and therefore what NATO will do is that we will provide facts. We will uh, uh, provide uh, uh, factual information about what we are doing. And, uh, and that's the best way also to counter uh, disinformation and propaganda. I will also say that every time we see disinformation, every time we see any attempts to use a situation or, or, or to uh, spread propaganda, it highlights the importance of a free and independent press, of the work journalists are doing every day. We need people who are asking the difficult questions, who are checking uh, the, their stories, checking their sources, and then <clears throat> conveying that to the broader public. That's always important, but in many ways, information, free and independent press, uh, is perhaps even more important of uh, times of crisis like we are faced with uh, uh, now. So NATO will respond, uh, sharing facts, being transparent, uh, telling the truth, and then uh, also uh, so defending the right of uh, free and open societies to also have a free and open press, especially in times as uh, these. Um, uh, I will also say that just by doing more together, as we do now, providing support to each other, we demonstrate that NATO allies stand together. Uh, and let me also add that in my annual report, which we published uh, a couple of weeks ago, uh, we also um, published uh, numbers from an independent uh, survey showing that there is broad support to NATO. So, yes, we have seen years of um, propaganda, years of disinformation trying to undermine the unity and the strength of NATO, but the reality is that the public support to NATO across the lines remains strong. And the next question will come from uh, Kabul, actually. So, Voice of America and uh, Samsa Masirat, please. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, thank you, Mr. Secretary General. Um, you know about the political crisis in Afghanistan. Um, uh, what do you think? Uh, do you think it has negative effect on uh, intra-Afghan peace talks? I visited Kabul um, recently, a couple of, couple of weeks ago, or when we signed the, the oh, perhaps uh, three weeks ago or something like that, recently. I visited Kabul and um, uh, uh, when the when the, the agreement uh, uh, was signed in Doha uh, between the U.S. and uh, and Taliban, I was in Kabul uh, at the ceremony there, uh, and I met with President Ghani. I met also uh, Chief Executive Abdullah. They were together at the signing ceremony, and of course we are aware of the political crisis in Kabul, uh, and uh, and of course we uh, uh, urge uh, the political. Uh, actors in Kabul to find a solution because we need uh, a, a strong government, we need a unity uh, approach from the, the Afghans in engaging with, with, the, uh, with, with, with Taliban uh, to, uh, to have a, a real uh, peace neg negotiations. Uh, at the end of the day, this, this has to be for the Afghans to solve. We can do a lot from Brussels and Washington and London and Berlin and, and other NATO capitals, but at the end of the day, the Afghans have to take responsibility for their own future. And that's the reason why we so strongly support the idea uh, and the efforts to establish uh, inter-Afghan uh, negotiations and Afghan-owned and Afghan-led uh, peace process. We are very close to that now with the agreement. Uh, we continue uh, to uh, be committed to Afghanistan with financial support, with political support and uh, with continued military presence because we believe that the best way we can support the peace process is to send a message to the Taliban that they will never win a battle battlefield. They have to sit down at the negotiating table and make real compromises. So we'll continue to do that, but at the same time, uh, the political problems, uh, challenges, crisis uh, in uh, Kabul, in Afghanistan, has to be solved by the Afghans, and therefore we urge the Afghans to do that. 
We'll now go back to Brussels uh, and uh, Montenegro Television, uh, Ivan Mianovic. Go ahead, Ivan. Hello, thank you very much. Uh, Montenegro recently sent a request uh, for help from uh, international partners. Are you going to discuss Montenegrin demand during this meeting? And my second question would be, what are mechanisms that NATO will use in order to tackle misinformation that are linked to COVID-19 and that can uh, put people's life in danger? Thank you. The best response to this information uh, is the truth. The best response to propaganda is uh, fact. Uh, and uh, that's exactly what we will uh, provide. Uh, NATO is a transparent, open organization. We are transparent about uh, what we do. We are transparent about uh, how we work together with all allies and, uh, and partners. And we are also transparent about what we do in this particular situation with the COVID-19 crisis. I mentioned some examples of how NATO allies provide help to each other. Uh, and, uh, and we will continue to be transparent about uh, everything. I also know that allies are uh, transparent. Uh, on how they deal with the COVID-19 uh, uh, crisis. So facts, um, that's the best response to this information and the fact that we are actually doing more together. Um, and also, also, as I said, uh, free independent press is uh, the best way to counter propaganda and disinformation. Um, uh, we have uh, several requests and, um, uh, and uh, also uh, for uh, allies uh, providing support to each other and, uh, and some of this is coordinated through the NATO coordination or disaster relief coordination center. Um, and, uh, and NATO allies have already provided, uh, for instance, with our air capabilities, help to each other. Uh, we will discuss what more we can do based on the requests that we have uh, seen from different uh, allies. Um, uh, we will discuss that uh, tomorrow uh, when foreign ministers meet and I expect them to look into how we can provide more help and also uh, 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 with higher speed. Uh, uh, the reality is that the, the armed forces uh, of NATO allied countries have been part of the response since the very beginning. Uh, but of course, if there is possible to do more, we will look into uh, that, uh, including specific uh, requests from, from specific uh, nations. Thank you. Now we go to Ketevan Kardava from TV Medi Georgia for the next question. Please go ahead, Ketevan. Uh, good morning, Mr. Secretary General. Uh, Georgian Foreign Affairs Minister said that you had the telephone conversation and he briefed you uh, about the measures taken by Georgian government to prevent the spread of the um, virus in Georgia. How would you assess these measures on this stage and also as we know, you discussed the additional measures to support uh, Georgia. You have just mentioned uh, about the future new package. Can you tell us more about this package? Uh, can we consider it uh, uh, as an update of a substantial package or it will be completely new package? Thank you very much. And again, take care. The package I expect foreign ministers to agree tomorrow uh, will be a, a kind of upgrade, will be additional measures to the uh, packages and support we already provide uh, to Georgia. Um, and it's about exercises, it's about participation in different uh, uh, programs, uh, 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 training and also educational programs uh, provided by, uh, by NATO. So it shows that we step by step are doing more together and step by step, uh, NATO provides more uh, support and help. We are, as I've stated many times before, also extremely grateful for, for the help that Georgia provides to NATO, especially to our missions and operations, and uh, in particular in, uh, in Afghanistan. Um, I spoke uh, with the Georgian uh, foreign minister um, a few days ago, and uh, we discussed also the, uh, uh, the efforts uh, in the fight against COVID-19. Uh, I highlighted uh, the, uh, the, the role of NATO, that our core task is, of course, to uh, provide deterrence and defense and to make sure that this health crisis doesn't uh, develop into a, a security crisis. It has to be for the national authorities uh, to make decisions uh, uh, on uh, how to deal well, uh, with the medical side uh, or, or the, the, the medical response, the health response to the COVID-19 crisis. Um, so I, I cannot assess exactly 
what uh, Georgia is doing uh, in, the, in the health domain, but I just uh, uh, highlight the importance that we all do uh, as much as we can, uh, because this is a common challenge that requires a common uh, uh, response. And of course, the World Health Organization provides a lot of important uh, uh, advice and, and, uh, and, uh, and, uh, and uh, advice and guidance uh, when it comes to how different nations should respond to the COVID-19 crisis. Thank you very much. Uh, this will conclude this, uh, this press conference. So, uh, Secretary General, uh, over to you. Thank you so much for joining me at uh, this uh, virtual uh, press uh, conference. Uh, and uh, stay healthy, stay safe, and uh, looking forward to see you again uh, soon. Thank you.